So I work as APT researcher, so I research some like targeted attacks and threats. And from several topics which I do, I chose like this one threat actor called Muddy Water, which is threat actor based in here in Middle East. And I think it's, I hope the topic will be interesting, interesting for you. We have like 30 minutes. So this is the outline I will be talking about. So after the short introduction, I will describe like what is the infection vector of this threat actor? What are the deliver, delivery methods? What are the backdoors? Because this threat actor uses some custom backdoors. Then I will continue with post exploitation tools. We will talk about some pieces of Android malware. Then I will talk about the false flags, interest, interest, uh, infrastructure, and I, I will continue to talk about who are the targets, who are the victims, and we also mentioned some attackers' mistakes, which helped us to maybe to track the threat actor or maybe decrypt some things. So for the introduction, this threat actor first appeared, or there have been like first notices about them in September 2017. And since the time, there have been released like many different blog posts or research papers from different researchers or different companies. This list is not like complete, of course. There are like some notable cases from the beginning and from the year 2018. Some of them also written by me, some of them or most of them written by other researchers. And this threat actor continues to develop and improve as the time goes on. So what is the infection vector? So as many and other like uh, threat actors, they rely or se on sending spear phishing emails. So they send email. This email has usually some attachment with weapon weaponized documents. These emails are usually sent from hacked accounts. So if they target someone in like some card country, they usually compromise like some other like entity, get access to their email. From this email, they just spread these malicious documents so that the so so that it looks like the attack is like more successful and it looks maybe more legitimate. About the documents, most of them contain macros. So they rely on social engineering for the victims to execute the macro and get infected. So now let's look at these emails. So these are the screenshots of how these typical emails look like. So you can always see there's like some text. It can be written in different languages, usually in English. We have also like some cases in Russian language. The attachment is the document. You can see in the left screenshot, it's like archive with document. On the right one, there is the document itself. You can see it's it's blurred, but you can see the addresses or email addresses from which they were sent from. So the one was like .edu.sa, for example. So some it was the, this email was sent from some account belonging under some educational institution in Saudi Arabia, for example. More examples, like the left one is again archive. In this case, it's like a RAR archive. The right one. It's just document, document X, not encrypted. Again, you can see the email address .gov.jo. So again, like some government entity compromised and from their account it's being sent. So I mentioned that there has been some documents. How these documents look like actually. So these documents try to impersonate different organization in different countries. So in the, in the list, you can see, you know, names of some countries from which which there are some institutions which these documents try to impersonate. And these are the examples how they look. So there is usually some blurred text in the background. And in the, in the middle, there is like blue area with text asking for enable editing, enable content, enable macros. And there are like many different one. This one, this one, for example, related to or trying to impersonate something, some, someone from Azerbaijan, for example, there are another one, another cases. This one is related to Pakistan. Not all of them we were able to distinguish, but all of them are related to some Middle Eastern countries, Turkey. This one looks like some CV, like some person applying for some job. So it was a little bit different case from the previous cases. And this one was interesting because this is like F. 35 fighter, it was sent to some 
like institutions or some targets in Turkey after they have been kicked out of this F-35 program. So these are examples of the documents. So next step is what happens when the victim clicks on this document and enables macros. So this is the, the timeline and what happens there. So it always, or in almost all cases, it starts with macros. These macros drop different files, usually script files. Then these script files, they obfuscated the main payloads, which are usually the backdoors. There's only like one exception. There has been like template injection, like in April of this year. Since the time, every time, like different, different cases of macros dropping different files. Out of these campaigns, which I mentioned before, I visualized like two of them in this kind of style. So you have the macro, it drops some files. In this case, it was like registry file and DLL file. Registry file is persistence, DLL file embeds the PowerShell code, which is obfuscated. After the obfuscation, it, it runs the main payload. And the second case, which I show like in this kind of schematics, you have the document, it downloads some PowerShell code from internet, which drops Visual Basic code and JavaScript code and some base 52 encoded file. And basically this Visual Basic script code runs JavaScript code, which decodes and runs the base 52 encoded code, which becomes in PowerShell, which then connects to CNC servers. Another interesting delivery method, which, I, which we noticed, were the trojanized keygens. So we have found like there is this tool called Burp Sweep for pen testers. There was a keygen written in Java, and this keygen was trojanized. So there have been written like edit like six different lines, as you can see in the screenshot. So they drop three different files into the infected machine. And this is the this is like one of the delivery methods, like one of these backdoors. I mentioned this base 52 encoding, which is quite untypical because if you are researchers, you probably know base 64, which is like very typical in, in IT, in computer science in general. So this thread reuse for some reason base 52. And this is the screenshot how it looks, this base 52. And there is the alphabet in the, in the middle screenshot. So you can see that it starts from with left brackets, right brackets. There are some numerical characters, numbers and capital letters. So this, this is the way how they encode the payloads. We wrote about this blog post in like, like last year. And since the time we noticed like few more changes to different base encodings. So we have seen like base 40, 45, 48. So they made some changes. So we need to modify our, like the obfuscation scripts to get the payloads. So now let's talk about the backdoors and post exploitation tools. So there have been like several different custom backdoors. Like one of them is called PowerStats. It was the main, main backdoor, which has been used for most of the time, maybe for one year or even more. And it, it supports the basic functions for information gathering, execution of files, and so on. Interesting is the screenshot on the right that there was like one command for executing uh, commands starting with keyword muddy. So that's why these researchers call this protector muddy water. This backdoor was always very highly obfuscated. So there have been like many different layers of obfuscation using different possibilities like base 64, compression, XOR, invoke expression codes, some useless, uh, like useless, you know, backtick characters which are ignored in PowerShell and so on, randomized function names. So there have been always like many different layers of obfusc obfuscation. For the communication with the, the CNC server, it always used like JSON notation or JSON format. It was encrypted with some not very strong encryption, which I will talk in the last section. This is the case which we got like when we were like playing with the backend server and send her the unencrypted request. And the response was like, stop, I kill you researchers. So it seems that they have been like kind of monitoring what was going on and they were talking to us in this way. So another, another backdoor I will mention is CloudStats. It was very interesting because it used like the 
like Dropbox or some kind of cloud storage for communication. So it created, so when the machine got infected, it created in this storage file with extension .rec, like register information about the infected machine. When threat actor wanted to send some command or execute some command, it created .cmd file in the storage. Then infected machine downloads the CMD file, runs the command, saves the result in .res file, uploads it to the and uploads it to the uh, cloud storage service. For us as researchers, if we know the API keys which are hard coded, it allowed us to monitor like what was going on and download like some of these communication files. More backdoors. These were quite simple. One of them was called sharp stats. Simple backdoor in dot, .NET and using some small modules in PowerShell for collecting the data. Then they also did, wrote some code in Delphi. The backdoor, we call it Delph stats. It kind of in a similar way to the previous case. Again, some used some PowerShell script for collecting data. It created some files with collecting data, with collected data and uploaded it to the CNC server. Then we noticed two more version of PowerStats backdoor, the PowerStats version two, again, heavily obfuscated, written in PowerShell, and there was like, like the loop for reading the, the commands in encoded in base64 and executing them via invoke execution in PowerShell. PowerStats v3, it was like multi-stage backdoor, so it installed very simple backdoor in the beginning when the machine got infected. And if the machine is more interesting for attackers, then they like upload another backdoor with more functionality. This backdoor like was very heavily obfuscated. There has been like lots of useless code, which was never, which never got ex executed, lots of obfuscation. So it always took like some time to find what was going on. After these uh, custom backdoors, we can see that uh, we, we found that there have been, they have been using some post-exploitation tools, which are the known tools like Metreprepter, PowerSploit, Quadic, the tool written in JavaScript, screenshot from this Quadic is on the right, on the, in the screenshot, Empire Project, and they have been also using some tools, some pen testing tools like CrackMapExec, crack for passwords like Mimikatz, Lasagne. Interesting case for the Lasagne that it was patched in a similar way like the key gen of Burp Suite, which I men mentioned like uh, sometime like, like in the beginning of my presentation. So you can see, if you can see the screenshot on the right, so you can see that there is like function called init mod dumpers and init is typo, it's written in TI and this function again drops like three different files containing like one of these backdoors from the beginning. I also mentioned that they, they used some Android applications. For Android applications, we have like very little information, very little visibility. We found just four applications and we don't know much about them. We don't know how, well, we are not sure how all of them were distributed, but we can only see like some, this is the timeline and we can only say that like two of them, like the Android Red and Droidjack is kind of like commodity malware, I think available on GitHub and other, other sources online. And two of these remote access tools or two of these malicious, uh, malicious malware were custom made. One of them was like file stealer using Telegram and another one was kind of traditional traditional malware with traditional like CNC communication. This is the list of commands supported for this custom malware. So the left one is version from 2018, right one from, 20, from September 2018. So the commands in the left and right screenshot overlap. So you can see that there is like some evolution in this time. So for these, who are these targets and lures? Like we don't know much, but we got like very little metadata. So one of these metadata says, like one of the files was named Afghanistan election. So probably there's been some election in Afghanistan and they were distributing it to these people. One of these um, mobile applications contains some brute forcing function with some IP addresses in Pakistan. 
another mal another family or malware family was used was spread via sending SMS messages, and one of these samples was distributed from some hacked Turkish website. So here's the screenshot when I mentioned like uh, sending the malware or spreading malware via sending SMS messages. So in this case, there is a screenshot like some some Turkish SMS message with the link to do some, something news.apk file. So there is the function for like sending, so for like spreading the short messages and sending them to, to all the contacts in in the infected uh, mobile machine or mobile phone. Now let's continue for the false flags, infrastructure and targets, this chapter. So after decompiling the malware to the to the latest level, we in some cases notice, for example, this kind of text in simplified Chinese suggesting that it might be coming from, from China. The message says something like unable to connect to URL, URL place, please wait for Dragon. And there will be like more of these messages in some of these backdoors. Also like the variable, like some variables used the keyword Dragon, again like suggesting China. Another case, in some other versions of the backdoor, there have been like two variables not used anywhere else, but they have been written in Hebrew, containing some messages like in Hebrew language. Like so, maybe it was like in this case they were like suggesting like the Israel. In some documents which I mentioned in the beginning, there have been like some texts or some metadata in Russian language. So if you see here the document properties. There is some text in Russian. You can see like the, the below is the PDB file from like a DLL file or from DLL library. Again, the path is the user slash some text in Russian. So there will be like different false flags. They probably try to mislead the researchers. Like for infrastructure. So after, you know, collecting all these samples or these files. So we have seen like we have collected like set of different IP addresses. Some, comprom some number of compromised WordPress proxies, list of several accounts for cloud providers, some domain names, dynamic domain names. And here are the numbers which we got. For the backdoor, for, for the, sorry, for the backend, we, we have found like some samples which were like running on the backend. This backend code was written in Python compiled with py installer so it was like executable file it was it was not online all the time only just for some time like for few hours every day and this is how it looked like when we run the file so you can see there is like some version compiled in this time and there is like kind of like console supporting like different commands this version uses like weak rsa implementation download from like this gist from internet and this backdoor supports like different commands so below you can see the variable called urls and if you put like ip address slash for example get or payload or get c or and so on they only serve the content for these given urls version 101 it changed a little bit now there is like instead of the text muddy there is like nice web with spider in ASCII art. One new thing which they implement or which they edit compared to previous versions was the support for modules or some kind of like extensions. So now let's talk about the targets and victims, like who they are. So I, so for us as researchers, we of course cannot see anything, everything. So our view is limited. So we see only, only something. So these are the targeted countries, which we noticed. So it's like mainly or mostly Middle East. Most, you know, they, this threat actor likes Turkey the most. So Turkey was the most targeted. We got like the most documents like targeting Turkey. But there have been also some cases in Europe, few European countries and US. When I say the targets, who they are, so it's like mostly like government institutions, government organization, 
individuals working for governments, so it's like two thirds of cases. Then telecommunication or IT service companies, and then a little bit like from the rest, like transportation, gaming, NGOs, food media. When I say government, which is the main target, what is government? Like pretty much everything from government. You can see like different ministries, law enforcement agencies, and also like some kind of like authority of like media or te television, like rela related, related uh, organizations. Interesting related to this threat actor, there's been like some leaks in April of this year and someone created a Telegram account and they have been leaking like some information about this threat account. So in this leaks, there have been mentioned some names re related to IRGC, which would be Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. It should be like some kind of like armed force organization or something be belonging to like, like, like armed force of like some Middle Eastern, Eastern country. And in these leaks, they also meant, they also leaked some, the source code of backend and some screenshots. And these screenshots, they look like this one. So there is, there is like list of victims, IP addresses, gone country, which they are from. And there will be like three different ones. So for us as a researchers, like we, we just look at these victims and we can confirm that it seems to be true because we also know some of the, about some of these victims. We have some similar in information or there is some overlap. And they also mentioned or they also shown some source code of this backend CNC servers. And this is also what we can confirm. This is like what we, what I have shown before, these two screenshots, one of them with this you know, the spider ASCII code, so we can decompile it and confirm that it seems to be true, these leaks. For the last part, I will show some cases or some mistakes which this threat actor done and which maybe made our job a little bit easier. So like, or interesting. So, the first thing is like self screenshot. So in the beginning, I mentioned that there have been like many different documents. They have been spreading and one document con contained this embedded image. And if you make it like bigger, you can see there that there is like some text written in like Cyrillic uh, like alphabet on the, on the top. You can see that there are, there's, there use like Chrome. The second tab from the left is like, like import CSV go fish. It's like some phishing, phishing platform or phishing toolkit. After that, there are some, there is some Al Arab, likely Arabic text we cannot see. So basically, basically this was like screenshot of the machine on which this document was likely created. And the username was called Turk. So it was like one thing. Like another thing, like before I mentioned that they used the proxies in some versions to, they, they used the proxy and the communication was not direct. So between the victim, there was the communication via proxy and the threat, the attacker sent the command via proxy and maybe could instruct the victim machine to upload some, you know, stolen files to the final CNC server. But these compromised proxies, Sometimes, like the, the, the attacker, like lost the control. I don't know what exactly, or we we cannot say what ex exactly happened. But some of these proxies contained list of these kind of files. Some of them are empty, but some of them have some content. And if we look inside the content, you can see that there is some command. For this, for example, the first one is like h, like uh, IP address slash hta. So this is like one of these commands, which I, which I mentioned before, were run, were, were, were implemented or were handled by these backend, backend, uh, CNC servers. Or the below is another case of command. This one, like base 64 encoded command again with some IP addresses. So through, while searching through these proxies, we could discover like some of these commands, which have been run or which have been executed. Also, I mentioned like encryption and there, the encryption, the encrypted code looks like this. So there have been like list of 
two or three digit numbers. So the communication was encrypted like this. It looked like this one. But if we do the reverse engineering of the code, we can see that there is like custom RSA implementation. And these are the prime numbers, which are very small, like two or three digits. So it's like very easy to factor out these, uh, these uh, numbers, get the original prime numbers, which are very small, compute the decryption key, and from the code, we can see like below in the screenshot, we can decode it. And we can see, for example, then when the machine gets infect was infected, it has like this version of Microsoft Windows operating system. It had like this IP address. This was the architecture. What was the domain name, IP address, and so on. So these were, so this is the way how we could identify like some of these victims because the code was executed on these machines and we could capture this. Bad operational security. So in many cases we have seen open directories. So sometimes we get the domain or IP address and we can see that there are some files, you know, some documents you can, you can list everything. So for us as researchers, the best way is just to download everything and have like more content to analyze. Yeah. In case of the, the mobile application or mob mobile, uh, uh, mobile malware, which I mentioned before, they use telegram language code F a Farsi. Maybe it, it might be, it might be false flag or maybe they, they just forgot to change it. And before I finish, like I will put like few links because if you, if you search like more in these, you know, documents or which, which I shared to you, there are like more kind of metadata, which can link to some, you know, particular individuals, but it can be of course like false flag. So it's like for, for us as researchers, like I'm more like interested into like how the malware works, how it is distributed. So I could show you, you like only like few screenshots, like there'd be like other researchers also working on the similar topic. So this one from group IV, this one, ICNA, Iranian cyber news agency. And in these websites, they are like mentioning or like, like discussing like who might be behind, even like exposing some individuals. This one, I think muddy water cyber spy, I think it was written by some Chinese researchers. So, so yes, this is basically all of what I wanted to say. My time is almost like running, running up. So as a conclusion, like this threat actor is like very interesting to, to follow them because they, they have been, we have, we acquired like lots of different documents targeting like many different countries, the payloads like, like evolved. So there'd be like many different backdoors and, you know, many, many different methods. And they have been, they've been quite successful, even though that they are not like using like zero days or anything like very advanced. They've, they've been, they've targeting like they've successfully targeted like many victims. They use both like Windows and mobile malware and their operation security their OPSEC was not very good. So it was good for us as researchers because we could acquire more data to analyze. Yeah. And that's it. So if I can answer any questions. Thank you. Jeremy here. So do we have questions? Hi, this is Gagan from Dark Matter. I have a question about the approach of the trend micro, especially in order to detect uh, such attacks like backdoor or CNC communications. Now, like, like for me as a researcher, I try to like follow this one group and I try to acquire, you know, as many samples as possible or the like IOCs, the IP addresses and domain names. And then I submit it to another two team, which will like at or create detections. No, I want to more uh, to know about the approach of the solution, trend micro solution, product solutions to detect uh, such uh, attacks. Like, I, I don't understand now, like... I mean, the preventive uh, approach of the trend micro when they provide the trend micro solutions through, what is the approach they took? I mean, what algorithm, mechanism or method? Like, I mean... Like, as, as I said, like we, we, we collect the, the IOCs and then they're just inserted to the, to the machine or to the, to the antivirus product and it gets blocked. 
Okay. Thank you. Do we have any additional questions in the room? So, because otherwise we are going to Slido. If you have the highest upvoted uh, question on Slido, um, meet me afterwards. You get a prize. Do you, do you have any update on uh, what's happened with this group since April? Like since April, April, like I don't, I don't know exactly, but they are like much less active. Like I almost stopped getting, or I got like few more samples, but not more. So probably they are like silent now. Any more from the? So then we go to Slido. Top one. Yeah. Do you really think that leaks are involuntary? I think it's difficult to say. It's usually the leaks are involuntarily involuntary, but in this case, it's probably true. Yeah. Okay, and we're going quickly on. Have you had? Have you had any indication that this kind of group is subcontracted by a larger threat actor with a bigger agenda? Seems useful as a way of throwing investigators off and protect themselves. Yeah, it can it can be possible. Like I don't, we don't have like like that much information. Like exactly like who who is behind or, or how their operation works, but it's it's possible. Okay. And it's often even in in case of other threat actors, this is also the case that maybe someone hires them to do some operation. Yeah. No more questions from the room. If Okay, and we continue with Slido. Can you explain template injection? Yeah, template injection. So you have the document, and this document has the link to another document, which is which gets downloaded from internet. And this is like this document serves like kind of like it's kind of like down downloader kind of kind of template. It's it's used like a template. So it's basically it's basically like downloader, I would say in in this case. Then, uh, thank you very much. I'm afraid we're out of time. So, everybody, please, warm applause for Jaromir. Yeah. Thank you.